Glory to God. Good morning, guys. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Um, I'm going to just wait, get, wait for people to join in. In another two minutes, we'll start. Omosafe! Tommy! Nelson! Man, everyone, I just, I'm just I'm going to wait for two minutes for people to join in. Um, and then we are at Romans chapter 15 this morning. Romans chapter number 15. Romans chapter number 15. Romans chapter number 15 is divided into... I'll say three parts. Romans chapter number 15 is where we are this morning. From verse 1 to verse 6 talks about bearing others' burdens. From verse 7 to 13, glorify God together. And then from 14 to the end, speak 14 to 21 speaks about Israel. From 22 to the end, speaks about Paul's intention to visit Rome. Um, yeah. So we're uh, this morning. DG, I didn't see you on Sunday morning. Now, you may, how are you? Laifa, how you doing? Winnie, how you doing? Rennie, how you doing? Pastor Mosul, how you doing? Uncle Francis, how you doing? Gracified, how you doing? Jerry Springer, 60, how you doing? My Dickiness, Mawali. My Dickiness, Mawali. How you doing? Round source, diary, everyone. Did you enjoy yesterday's service? It was it was beautiful. I enjoyed. I totally enjoyed yesterday's service. It was, it was beautiful. It was very. It's very good. It's beautiful. I was out of the country. Good morning. It's beautiful. Yesterday's service was an experience. Every service is an experience at the Logic Church. Glory to God. Good morning, Doctor Flo. It sounds good. <laughs> it just sounds good. I love it. D flow. Uh, yes, yes, there was good. This service was mind blowing. Awesome. Awesome. You guys don't miss midweek service. Don't miss midweek service at the Logic, Logic Church. Every service is a different experience. I cannot explain it to you, but I'm just saying to you don't miss. Don't miss it. Don't miss service. Glory to God. Presence there was amazing. Glory to God. Okay. Every service is. Every yes, every service is an experience. Prayer sessions are just a vibe. Amen. We are grateful to you to have you teaching us every service, P Flo. Yeah, I love the prayers yesterday, Dr. Flo. Let's do this. Um, let's make our declaration, then we can delve into Romans chapter 15. Declaration starts in three, two, one, go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Let's do it again one more time. One, two, three, go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 
all of my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. Grace is working for me. I feel led to do it one more time. I feel led to do it one more time. One, two, three, go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are at Romans chapter 15. Father, bless your word in Jesus' name. Open up our eyes to see Christ, Jesus, who is the word of God. And let us be blessed by this chapter, the text. Um, help me as I teach, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We are at Romans chapter um, 15. Glory to God. Romans chapter 15 uh, from verse 1. We then who are strong ought to bear with the with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Um, I'm thinking there's a scripture here. Yeah, I knew Galatians, Galatians 6 will come as reference. First it's 5 verse 5 verse 14. Verse 2. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. Please your neighbor, leading to edification. Not please your neighbor just because you want to please your neighbor, but for the sake of edification. What it means there is inspire your neighbor um, by edifying your neighbor. Our goal must be to empower others to do what is right and good for them and to bring them into spiritual maturity. That's the meaning of let each one of the let each one of you please your neighbor unto edification. Is not to become man pleaser is to is to what's the word is to inspire it's to oh what's the word again is to inspire is to challenge the person into being a better version of themselves uh, uh please your neighbor into edification um for edification is not people's pleaser um verse verse one and two let me do TPT 1 and 2. Now those who are mature in the faith can easily be recognized, for they don't live to please themselves, but have learned to patiently embrace others in their maturity. Encourage. That's the word. That's the word I was looking for. Encourage. 2. Our goal must be to empower others to do what is right and good for them. Not empower others to do what is right and good for you. Do what is right and good for them and to bring them into spiritual maturity. That's what it means by um, challenge them to good works. Mercy, you got that right. Mercy, you got that right. Challenge them to good works. So I don't want you to just see King James says, um, people pleasing, so I have to please people. No, no, no. It's challenge them to good work. That's how you please people. Amen. Glory to God. So let's go to, um, let's go back to verse 3. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever things are, were written before, were written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. 
So this is why I say to you, the Old Testament was written for you, not written to you. The Old Testament was written for you to learn from, but not written to you. It was not addressed to you. It was written for you to learn from. Verse 4, whatever things were written, the scriptures, whatever things were written, that is the scriptures, before, we are written for our learning. They are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Jumbo, are you in town? Jumbo, are you in town? We through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We might have hope. Glory to God. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded towards one another according to Christ Jesus. That you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to emphasize verse 6. So they were written for our benefit, not addressed to us. Yeah, you got that. Um, verse 4 is what I'm... Um, Minister Ayo Vincent is emphasizing they were written for our benefit, not addressed to us. So you can't read what was written under the law and say, okay, it's all the Bible. It was written that you will learn from it. It was not written um, addressing to you. And for whatsoever things were written before, we are written for our learning. So we're able to learn Christ, we're able to understand it because we have the lenses of the epistles. So verse 6 is that you may, with one mind and one mouth, I'm reading verse 6 deliberately. You may with one mind and one mouth. Because it is not good enough to have the same. You guys are saying the same thing, but your minds are not the same. You see what I'm saying? This is what I was saying two days ago yesterday, that uniformity is not unity. Uniformity is not unity. That you may with one mind and one mouth. Not with one mouth and different mind. Not with one mind and different mouth. One mind and one mouth glorify God, um, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. And everyone says, Amen. Verse 7. Therefore, receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now, I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers. Verse 9, that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. For this reason, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again, he said, rejoice, O Gentiles, with the people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Lord him, all you people. Again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of J.C. and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In, the, in him, the Gentiles shall have hope. These are prophecies from Isaiah chapter 11. These are prophecies from Isaiah chapter 11. These are prophecies from Psalms 117 verse 1. Prophecies from Isaiah chapter 11, Psalms 117 verse 1. Prophecies from Deuteronomy 32, verse 23. I'm in verse 13 now. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to read that again. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are bound in hope by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are bound in hope by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Verse 14. Um, now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nonetheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to you 
on some point as reminding you because of the grace given to me by God that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. You now see we are emphasizing the more that Apostle Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. Apostle Peter was apostle to the Jews. Fundamental truth you need to know about the scripture. That I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I have reason to glorify to glory in Christ Jesus, in the things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of anything of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me, in word, in deed, to make the Gentiles obedient. I want to read verse 18 again, very powerful. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me, that means if Christ has not done it through me, I'm not proud of it. Did you, hear, did you see that? If grace has not done it through me, it's not something I'm proud of. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word, in deed, to make the Gentiles obedient. Are you seeing this? I will not dare to speak of anything that Christ has not accomplished through me. I'm not boasting on anything that God has not done through me. If I did it by myself, I can't talk about it. If God did it through me, I will talk about it. Glory to God. In 19, in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and around about Lyricum, um, Ilicum, or something like that, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So and so, I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not announced, they shall see, and those who have not heard shall understand. He's quoting from Isaiah chapter 52 verse 15. So Paul is explaining Isaiah 52 verse 15 that when Isaiah was talking to whom he was not announced, they shall see and those who have not heard shall understand. What was it saying? That the gospel will come to the Gentiles. Amen. We end with Paul's visit to Paul's plan to visit Rome. Paul's plan to visit Rome. For this reason, I also have been much hindered from coming to you. But now, no longer having a place in these parts and having a great desire these many years to come to you. Whenever I journey to Spain, I shall come to you for I hope to see you on my journey and to be helped on my way there by you. If first I may enjoy your company for a while. But now I'm going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. For it pleased those from Macedonia and Achai to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. And it pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors. For if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister to them material things. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? <laughs> uh, okay. I, I'm committed to preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If, you, if it offends you, if it robs you of the bad, the, the bad way, you know, I really don't have control about that. I want you to examine verse 27. It pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors. For if the Gentiles have been partakers, have received of their spiritual things, the duty, the response of those Gentiles that receive those spiritual things is to respond material things back to the people who gave you spiritual things. Pastors don't like to talk about this because it looks as if you're asking for money or you're asking for stuff, but it's a biblical principle. And you all know me. I'm not going to try to scam you. It's, give me your money. How much do you even have that you want to give to me? I beg you, sit down somewhere. But he's saying that the duty is also for the people who receive this word of God 
to respond material things to the one who gives you spiritual things. And it's his principle in the, in the epistles. It's a principle in the epistles. It's a principle in the epistles. That's what the Bible says. Father, great grace be multiplied to you as you go for your interview. You have remarkable favor. The doors are open towards you in Jesus' name. Blessings. Remarkable. Is there. Romans 11 emphasizes that already. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, um, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 11. I need to get my other Bible so I can read 1 Corinthians 9. Somebody post, somebody, if you can paste 1 Corinthians 9 verse 11. It said, those who minister carnal things to you, it is not bad for you to respond. Those who minister spiritual things to you, rather, it's not bad for you to respond by blessing them with your carnal things. Yeah. Yeah. So, it is, a, it is your, it's part of your Christian duty to respond to the people who feed you with the word of God's grace. To respond. Sorry, my billionaires. Sorry, my billionaires. I apologize. My billionaires. My billionaires. My billionaires. See, verse 9 says, If we have sown unto you spiritual things, um, is, it is a great thing if we reap. Is it a great thing if we reap your carnal things? That's what it says. It's not, it's not a big, if we reap your carnal things. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. And uh, listen to me, if you're a member of this church, or you follow me, I'm committed to show you every detail in scripture. It, every day, it's not so, it's part of it too, you must respond. There's some of you, you don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that it's, I mean, it's a public place. I, so I think somebody, one time, someone asked for my account number and I gave to her. And I was going to give to her. She said, no. It's not possible that you're my pastor and I don't have your account details. Mm, that is not, I was not trained like that. I'm like, who trained you that? And then she mentioned, I grew up in a setting where we were taught properly. Not out of compulsion, but out of honor. You should have your pastor's details. You should have his address. It is your job to... Delivery, drop this. This is just proper Christian behavior. But let's move. That's not the people. You will soon beg us to stop. I've said, Amen. Oluwao. Ah, Baba. Imo. Baba. Baba. Imi. Ah. Imo. Ah. Baba. Do it. Eh. Amen. In Jesus' name. Verse 28. Therefore, when I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I shall go by way of. Um, um, I shall go by way of you to Spain. Verse 29. We're almost done. But I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Hey, the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. I shall come in the fullness of of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit that you thrive together with me in prayers to God for me. And some of you, let me just go back to that scripture I was reading in verse 27. Some of you are really, you know, one lady called me yesterday because I was giving an example of Meadwell lamb chops and she sent me money she said people i just wanted to go and buy that lamb chops and i was very touched it's not because i you know it was just for me it was that's just good response god bless you bless you bless you bless you bless you it should be a culture you have the details of your church you have the details of your pastor you have the you have this you you are you are a responding believer it's a sign of spiritual maturity Amen. Verse 31, we're closing. That I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe, and that my service of Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints. That I may come to you with joy by the will of God, and may be refreshed together with you. I need to read from verse 30 again. 
how can we not take care of our father both abuja and lagos church we are responders amen from verse 30 now i beg you brethren to the lord jesus christ and through the love of the spirit that you strive together with me in prayers to god for me that's what he's saying now they are pray for me pray for me pray for me that i may be delivered from those in judea who do not believe that means i have people who i'm talking to here they don't believe and that my service for jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints responding believers you all need to respond i remember the time i my, the time my phone crashed two people came and just you know and they brought the money i bought the best like one terabyte 13 pro max i, I even had change for other things you, you need to respond it's very important you somebody you think i respond to oh yes i do i respond to people who you know, not like I learn from them, but they're just people who are fathers of the faith that I respond to every now and again. Tomorrow I'm traveling to go and respond somewhere. Because it's the culture of grace. We are responders. And some of you have been going to church, you have never bought your pastor one gift. Are you proud of yourself? Are you proud of yourself? Verse 32, as we close. That I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. Now the God of peace be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen. I prophesy the God of peace be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen. The God of peace be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray for I feel led to pray for you this morning and then we can close. If you are on the mainland, don't miss this evening. It is going to be wow. If you are on the mainland, don't miss this evening. It is going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome on the mainland this evening. Pray for me. Um, tomorrow morning I'll be here. We're going to do Romans chapter what, what Romans chapter 16, the last chapter. We are finishing the book of Romans tomorrow. Oh my word. So tomorrow we finish the book of Romans. Jesus is Lord. By tomorrow you would have said, I've read the book of John. I've read the book of Acts. I've read the book of, book of Romans. Romans 16, the last chapter of the book of Romans. Mainland church, the energy church. The energy church. Maybe that's what I would have named it. The energy church. We can't wait. I love my mainland people. Hebrews next. Jim just is already pushing for Hebrews next. Hebrews next. Hebrews next. Okay. I mean, I love the book of Hebrews. It's really deep. So, Hebrews next. We can do, well, we'll do, we'll do by election what to do. Father, I pray your blessing and your grace manifested with mighty testimonies on your people that between now and Sunday um, between now and Sunday there will be tangible miracles. There will be tangible miracles between now and Sunday. Kangwa de bevi, guande beverasti, skoporoski venemengi akosku fesha, shabradam be por stifrahantos ke benendris. I pray between now and Sunday that there will be mighty, evidentable testimony in the name of Jesus, with mighty evidence in the name of Jesus. I decree by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus that mountains are shifting out of the way. God goes ahead of you to open doors in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that the grace of God is mighty upon your life and miracles are showing up everywhere in the name of Jesus. I release the grace to finish strong. 
I decree witty invention that the enemy is not able to outsmart you, that you are blessed beyond your imaginations. Great grace is released on you in the name of Jesus, that your heavens remain opened. Angels are sending and descending to do the bidding of God. I bless you in the name of Jesus. With things money can buy, with things money cannot buy, and money itself in Jesus' matchless name. And everybody said, Amen. Mainland Church, I will see you this evening. Tomorrow morning, I'll be here as we conclude Romans, the book of Romans. We're going to be reading Romans chapter 16. Very powerful book. I love Romans chapter 16. Glory to God. Keep me in your prayers. It's your boy, Pastor Flourish from the Logic Nation. Never forget, God loves you more than the devil hates you. Have a flourishing weekend ahead of you with great grace. Blessings.